Always. We ask the question, what is needed in the world? The U.S. accuses Iran of backing a $1.5 million hit on the Saudi ambassador to Washington, which it says it foiled with the arrest of this man, Iranian-American Mansour Arbabzer. This plot was a flagrant violation of international and U.S. law and a dangerous escalation of the Iranian government's long-standing use of political violence and sponsorship of terrorism. Soon after, America imposed a fresh round of sanctions against the country long described as an axis of evil. The Saudis, too, vowed to punish Iran. Tehran says the allegations are ludicrous and that Washington and its allies are using the case to ratchet up sanctions a bit to further isolate the Islamic Republic. We don't need to do this. Why should the Iranian people should go inside the U.S. and kill the ambassador of a friendly country? Why? Talk to Al Jazeera sits down with the Iranian president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad to get his view of this latest diplomatic spat with the United States and Saudi Arabia. Hello everyone, I'm Tony Harris and this is Talk to Al Jazeera with Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. If we could, sir, let's begin with the very serious accusations, as you know, are being lodged by the United States that your country was involved in a plot to kill the Saudi ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Abdul Al Jabir. What is your categorical response to the accusations? In the name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful, O Lord, hasten the reappearance of Imam al Mahdi, grant him uh, victory and good health, and make us amongst those who are his staunch followers and attest to his rightfulness. First of all, I would like to say greetings to all the viewers, and uh, I would like to say good night to the places where it is night, and say good afternoon to the people in other parts of the world. And I would like to ask God to grant happiness to everyone in the world. As you said, recently the U.S. administration uh, made an accusation, an allegation against Iran, one of the ugliest things that one can do, that is assassinating others. I think this has to be looked into from different aspects. First of all, this is an accusation that uh, does not fit the Iranian nation. Terror is uh, employed by those who are devoid of any civilization or culture. Iranian, Iranian nation has had a great civilization and culture, and it is pro-friendship and brotherhood. Terror is for those that don't have any region or logic. People of Iran are pro-logic and rationality. People of Iran have never invaded uh, their neighbors uh, and they have never done anything against the laws. We don't need to do this. Why should the Iranian people should go inside the U.S. and kill the ambassador of a friendly country? Why? What, 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 what will it gain us? Anybody who hears this, who hears this laughs. Why should we do this? Of, we have a logic. We are opposed to the U.S. policies. And we have, we have said it clearly. And we are not worried about uh, expressing our opposition. But we might say that. Why, why has the U.S. administration done this, leveled this accusation? There are different theories. If the U.S. administration is under the uh, impression that by doing this it can create a conflict between us and Saudi Arabia, then I have to say that the U.S. administration is sorely mistaken. The truth will be revealed ultimately and there will be no problem for us at that time.
Maybe the U.S. administration might want, might want to divert attention from what is going on inside the U.S. Uh, that, that, that is clear, crystal clear, that such a thing won't happen. I mean, the economic problems of the U.S. are very serious. And by accusing Iran, it is not going to solve any problem. Uh, I think if we move forward, uh, and as time passes, the U.S. administration uh, might uh, introduce Iran as uh, responsible for beginning the Vietnam War or the Korean War. Right. If we move forward, then I said that it, it was Iran that encouraged Mr. Bush to attack that Afghanistan is clearly and Iraq. My invitation to jump here and 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 ask you just to to a couple of questions uh, as I attempt to to address some of the points that you've just made. What I still haven't heard is your categorical response to the accusations. And, and let me detail it a little bit. As you know, uh, the case is now being referred to the United Nations Security Council, which means this case is moving along quickly. And let me share with you portions of two letters written uh, to the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Ban Ki-moon, by the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Susan Rice. We have confirmed information that this conspiracy was conceived, sponsored, and directed by elements of the government of Iran. A serious charge. Again, according to our information, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force and several of its high-ranking officers directed and funded the conspiracy. If you would, sir, again, what is your specific response to the allegations made in these letters to the United Nations? Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs has released an official statement. We have categorically rejected this accusation. We have also expressed our objection to it. It is clear, you know, we have been accused by the U.S. before. They have failed in Afghanistan and they are accusing Iran. They, they failed in Iraq and uh, they did a similar thing. I mean, it, it, we have to find to the root cause of the terrorist actions. And if we do that, we see that they are somehow related to uh, the U.S. I mean, some, somebody who was coming to into Iran from the easterly borders. He, he, he killed 140 people and wounded 280 people. Mr. Rigi. And our security forces arrested this guy, and he was tried, and in his trial he offered documentations showing that he was backed by the American military forces. I have, I, I, I can, I, I, I sent a CD including that information to Mr. Obama and to Secretary General of the UN. We didn't receive any response from them. They, they, they we clearly support these terrorists. We, con we, we condemn such acts. We do it now. We're referring Iran to the Security Council. You know, we have said it before. Security Council is dominated by the U.S. No doubt about it. The U.S. has been against us for the last 30 years. And, uh, more than 60 years, I mean, since the coup d'etat, which uh, happened in the 50s, uh, and the, uh, the U.S. actually toppled the national regime in Iran. And since that time, the U.S. has always been against us. And maybe uh, uh, the, the surge in the, in the production of narcotics after the presence of the Americans in Afghanistan, maybe Iran is responsible for that, well, for that rise. Well, Mr. President, this is, this is an important point because in your speeches to the United Nations, you have expressed a desire to see the United Nations work more effectively. So do you, in a sense, welcome this opportunity to have this case put before the Security Council? Do you welcome it? No. 
سازمان ملل الان سازمان ملل نیست not really UN it doesn't really stand for United Nations because it general assembly is not the top or the highest authority or the decision making body in all the legal bodies the decision making body is the general assembly where everybody is present but at the UN everything is ruled by a body in which are five countries this is uh, uh, undemocratic and this is not just I mean, they, it, it, in practice it is the US that is running the show and so it doesn't have any legal worth and they have in the last 30 years it has always adopted uh, positions against us this is, this is why there was a war imposed on us for eight years and our people have fallen victim to terrorism look at this building behind this building there is another building the Prime Minister and the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran and some other officials had a meeting in that building. Uh, it was, that building was bombed by a terrorist group. All these people were burned to death and the people who claim responsibility for this heinous act are now in the U.S. They are living freely. We, we have objected to the U.S. Yes. several times about this. We have been a victim of terrorism. We don't need to be a terrorist. It doesn't solve any of our problems. Terror is used by those who are after militancy. We are pro Mr. President, if I could bring it back, and, 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 and I've heard those arguments in the past, and you know I have, if I could bring it back to the specific, uh, a case that we're discussing right now, do you take the allegations seriously from the United States? And seriously in, in this instance would mean launching an investigation of your own into the accusations. Have you done that? Will you do that? Why should we do such an investigation? Every day, the U.S. administration levels new accusations against Iran. Should we start our investigations into any of them? I, I think the attitude by the U.S. administration is a wrong one. If they want to, to exert pressure on the people of Iran, then they are not doing the right thing. Experience has shown that uh, pressure is not going to pay off. It's not going to work. Uh, have, have, have they achieved any result from exerting pressure on Iran for 30 years? I think it would be in the best interest of the U.S. administration to be a friend of the people of Iran. But by accusing Iran, they are not going to achieve anything. It is interesting. Saddam Hussein started a war against us. The U.S. administration was accusing us of being a warmonger. But then it was the Secretary General said that no, it was Saddam was at fault. He started it. But the U.S. administration has not confessed to this. The U.S. administration was behind Saddam Hussein. Mr. President, if I could, I, I, I simply want to try to, to, to move the conversation forward. I, I've heard you make these points in numerous other interviews, but I, I really would love an opportunity with you at this moment to try to move the conversation forward. And on this question, perhaps one final point here, is there any way a plot like this against the uh, Saudi ambassador to the United States could have been conceived, could have been hatched within the smaller branches of your government without you being aware of it without the supreme leader being aware of it. Could it have been hatched? I, I gave you my response. 
من اصلا روش دولت آمریکا روش غلطی the method used by the US administration is not a right method I mean, what does it mean you know every now and then they level new uh, allegations against Iran and Iranians I want to say that the US administration should be mindful of its behavior they are going to leave negative impacts on the, uh, the people of Iran. This, and people, of, people of Iran now believe that the U.S. is their enemy. These, these rushed actions and behaviors are, 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 are not going to improve things for them. They are not going to help the U.S. administration in any way. They, 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 they want to create some conflicts and, and, uh, and discord inside Iran, but that's not true. I, 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 Iran does not kid with anyone, does not joke well, with anyone. Well, I, I understand that, but it's not just the United States in this particular case. As you know, the Saudi foreign minister says Iran, uh, quoting now, was responsible for the alleged plot. You said earlier that you don't believe this, this allegation will harm the relationship between Iran and Saudi Arabia. But here, clearly, uh, the Saudi foreign minister is seemingly indicating something very different. Would you agree? I would like to ask you a question. The foreign minister of Saudi Arabia, uh, was he the one who actually discovered this plot? It is an acclaim by the U.S. administration. They, they, they said it themselves. I would like to uh, say to my uh, Saudi brothers that there is a verse in the Holy Quran that says, that it says that if, if as somebody, a liar brings you some news, you should not accept it. Uh, I mean, immediately, you should, you should try to examine it. The U.S. administration is not, uh, does not, is not interested in Iran or in Saudi Arabia. They want, they see their interest in having a, a, a dispute between Iran and Saudi Arabia. They want to dominate our region. I mean, the U.S. wants to do, to do this, and the way to do it is to create a conflict or a disagreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Does it ha it is meaningless. Somebody from Iran goes to another country to kill his Muslim brother? The, like the people who came in, uh, into Iran uh, uh, to assassinate others, we never tried to kill them. We arrested them legally, we put them on trial, and then we punished them. So, so Mr. President, the suggestion then from you is that, what, the United States is making this up out of whole cloth? with the details in this complaint i'm sure you've seen the complaint with all the very specific claims is it is it just being created out of whole cloth uh, by the fbi by the u.s justice department in the past the u.s administration claimed that there was a, a wmds or weapons of mass destruction in iraq they said it so strongly they offered and presented documentations and everybody said that yes now we believe you we buy it and, uh, there were other countries that accompanied the u.s in attacking iraq now uh, is everyone asking them them, uh, were, were those claims true? Did they find any weapon of mass destruction in Iraq? Creating, uh, fabricating a bunch of papers uh, is not a difficult thing to do. And FBI is a master of such things. In spy systems, uh, fabricating documents uh, is an easy thing. They can forge your signature easily, effortlessly. This is not a difficult thing to do. Here's the important question. You've, you've gone through some of the history of the tensions between the United States and Iran. The question many people around the world want answered by you uh, right now at this moment is this. Mr. President, the United States, Iran, are these two countries on a collision course inexorably leading to a, a military collision course 
Would you please take that on? به صلات به یک برخورد نظامی منجر بشه. آیا هم چیزی پیش بینی می‌کنید شما؟ من چنین چیزی پیش بینی نمی‌کنم. I don't think so. البته فکر می‌کنم افرادی در دولت آمریکا هستند که there are some people in the US administration who want this to happen. اما فکر می‌کنم اولاقلای زیادی در آمریکا هستند که Let me ask you some questions. I don't want you to answer the questions because the answers are clear. Do they have Iranian military forces beside or along the borders of the U.S.? آیا ما یه جنگ 8 ساله علیه آمریکا رو حمایت کردیم؟ Did we support a, a war 8 year old war against the US؟ ما 25 سال از یه حکومت دیکتاتوری مثل شاه در آمریکا حمایت کردیم. Did we support a dictatorial regime like that one of Shah for 25 years in the US؟ ما از گروه های تروریستی که مسئولین مسئولین آمریکا رو ترور کردن حمایت کردن. Did we support the terrorists who assassinated American officials? یه جنگ یک طرف است. یه جنگ یک طرف است. من نمی‌دونم مسئولین آمریکا چرا انقدر با ملت ایران دشمن. Why is it that the US officials are such enemies of Iranian people? They're so hostile towards Iranians. مدرم پاسخ ببینید ازون من یه اطمینان خاطر به اونا بده لیت می ری اشور دن اگر اونا فکر میکنن دوران شاه برمیگرده اشتباه میکنن در تایم آف در شاه ویل کم بک دن دی آر میستیکن Gravely mistaken. But that's not going to come back. Iran is a free, independent country now. It would be in the best interest of the, the U.S. to be on the side of Iran. For 32 years, they have been uh, the enemy of Iran. What, 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 is the re what has been the result of this? Anything, any movement, any current against Iran has been devised by the Americans. We, we, we say what we want to say clearly. We express them freely. Let me ask you another question. Why, why is it that anyone in the world that is against U.S. policies is assassinated in the U.S. and outside the U.S.? The nuclear scientist was assassinated in Tehran. Why? Because the Security Council revealed his name. And then he was assassinated by the Zionists. Why is it that anybody who is against the U.S. policies is accused of being a terrorist? In the General Assembly, I, I, I declared, I announced what the people of Iran want the world to know. We, we, are, we have said that we are against the U.S. policies. But it, there is a logic behind it. It is, it is logical and they can, they, can, they can respond to it. We, we will never enter any war against the U.S. or against any other country. This is our pol policy. It, we want to defend ourselves because we believe that the war should be run with logic, not with terrorism. Why should be such a thing called terrorism? The Zionist regime declares, you know, that it is going to assassinate somebody and goes ahead with it. And the Zionist regime is the friend of the U.S. So we don't need terrorism. So, Mr. President, we have logic. That's our weapon. So, Mr. President, are you saying to me that Iran will not unilaterally Attack? Sure. Take your time. Let me. No, no, it's fine. Take your time. Better? Go on, please. Okay. Are you, are you saying to me that Iran will not unilaterally attack another country? Is that what you're, you're saying, that you will only defend yourself? Yes, we have always been doing this. Uh, it has always been our uh, policy, defense. We have never uh, attacked anybody. Why should we do that? Why should we start a war? We are a great nation. Hundreds of years we have been living with our neighbors in harmony. And we, we will do so in the future.
will continue to do so in the future. We have always said to the Persian Gulf littoral states that the U.S. administration will be over one day. They, they will have to leave our region one day, but we, are, we will have to live with each other forever. We cannot be our each other's enemies. We cannot act against each other. We have to live with each other. Hello everyone, I'm Tony Harris and this is Talk to Al Jazeera with Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. You mentioned a, a few moments ago that it would be helpful to get to the core of some of the issues at the heart of some of these disputes. Let's try to do that uh, with some of our time here. What is at the core of the dispute with the United States? What's at its, its essence? Is it um, Iran's nuclear program? Is it Israel? Is that it? Is that at the core, those two issues at the core of the disputes, the running disputes between Iran and the United States? I think the core is, uh, I mean, uh, lies in the attitude or the vision of uh, the U.S. administration and officials, they should recognize the rights of the regional countries, I mean the countries of our region. They should not try to dominate us. They, they should work with us on equal footing. The, the U.S. administration is one administration, Iranian government is one, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. They are all equal to each other and they are all respectable. Let me ask you a question. The, what is the U.S. Navy fleet doing in the Persian Gulf? What is it doing there? Who, who has given an assignment to, the, to, to that fleet to be there? What is it protecting? It, it, can, it can go back to the U.S. and, and, and help the, the country to become more prosperous. Nobody has sent them any invitation. We can, we can, we can, we can have a referendum. We can stage a referendum inside the region and see who, who is pro this, who is a pro U.S. interference in the region, who votes for it. I, I mean, the way the, uh, the U.S. administration treats the region is wrong, and because of this, they, they, they are defeated all the time. They should correct their methods, their policies, and, and if they do, do that, they, they will be victorious. How do you then, Mr. President, answer the question of your support for Hezbollah and Hamas? How do you answer that return question that is posed by so many around the world? How do you support that, those operations? Uh, that is the, uh, in the charter of the United Nations. Any nation has the right to fight against occupation. Right? If the U.S. is occupied now, don't you think that the Americans have the right to fight against the occupiers? And uh, all the freedom-loving nations of the world should support the American people in that case. That, that is enshrined in the U.S. Charter. Fight against occupation is recognized there. And uh, it is legitimate. I'm asking you. The que this question, the Palestinians, are they in, in their home or in, in the U.S.? I mean, they are inside their own home. Hezbollah is in Lebanon. And they, they are attacked in Lebanon. Hezbollah needs to defend itself. The U.S. administration 
در دفاع از حقوق if, بشر صداقت داره if it, it really honest if it really wants to defend human rights then the US administration should defend the resistance of Hezbollah من اصلا تعجب میکنم چطور I'm surprised آمریکا به این بزرگی باید قربانی تعداد صهیونیست بشه and the US is so great why should it be a victim of Zionists آیا واقعا آمریکا در اسارت صهیونیست است I think it is imprisoned by the Zionists چرا باید اینطور باشه؟ Why should it be like this? 300 میلیون جمعیت مردم منطقه است. 300 میلیون people live in the region. دولت آمریکا در مقابل 300 میلیون استاده is standing against 300 million people to defend a bunch of Zionists. که این صهیونیست ها حتی علیه یهودی هم هستند. And these Zionists are also against the Jews. I mean not even the Jews are supporting them. The Zionists, 10,000 people, the maximum number, number of the Zionists, the, 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 the Zionist party, 10,000 people. The whole U.S. and Amer all Americans should be sacrificed for the sake of these Zionists. Your rhetoric in this area, uh, for years now, uh, you have spoken about Israel being eliminated. Would you clearly for everyone watching this program state the I Iranian position, the government position with respect to Israel uh, just so that we're all absolutely clear You see, we believe that occupation should be eliminated Killing people, murder, that should disappear Terror, terrorism should be destroyed, should be eliminated. And uh, does the Zionist regime do anything but these things? But what our method is a humanitarian one. I mean, it, we, 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 we talk in Tel Aviv. How many people protested against the Zionist regime in Tel Aviv? Who were the, those protesters? Were they Iranians? Did we send them to that place? They were the people who had been brought to that place by the Zionists themselves. The, the Zionist regime does not have any legitimacy. 70 years ago, there was no such thing as a Zionist regime. This is, this was, it was created by the UK and then by the US. The, 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 the people in the region never accepted that. But Mr. President, what do you mean when you say that uh, Israel should be eliminated. What do you see as Iran's role in in Israel? Our, our role, the, these, the, the wars that we, uh, I just told you about, that's our role. We, we explain the truth to the people. We say occupation should be eliminated. The rights of the people of Palestine should be reinstituted. People should decide themselves. The nation should decide themselves. People of Palestine should decide their own fate. ما جای کسی تصمیم نمیگیریم. We, we, we don't do that for others. ما فکر می‌کنیم همه باید همینطور رفتار کنیم. We believe that everybody should be like this. دولت آمریکا هم باید همین کارو بکنه. should do the same thing. Should follow suit. جای دیگران تصمیم نگیرید. They should not decide for other people. اونا هم نقطه نظراتشو بگه. پیشنهاداتشو بده. They can offer their own proposals and viewpoints. ملت ها میشنون تصمیم میگیرن. People will hear them out and then take their own decisions. ما حق نداریم نظراتمون رو تحمیل کنیم. We, we don't have the right to impose our viewpoints on other nations. حتی به نام شورای امنیت. Even in the name of the Security Council. من فکر می‌کنم اگر دولت آمریکا به US administration علیه ایران امنیت دیگه هیچ آبرویی برای شورای to be talking past one another. Isn't that dangerous at, at this day and time? It, to seemingly be, be talking past one another. 
این, این فکر نمی کنی که به خطر بندازه این, این دنیای ما حاضر ما رو اگر ما اف بنا نداشته باشیم نظر خودمون رو به دیگران تحمیل if کنیم اگر ما نظر خودمون رو به دیگران تحمیل اگر به ملت ها no حق انتخاب آزاد بدیم اگر به ملت ها حق انتخاب آزاد بدیم همه صحبت هاشون رو بکنم ملت ها انتخاب میکنم اگر به ملت ها حق انتخاب مشکل اینجاست که دولت آمریکا با استفاده از سازوکارهایی که دستش هست بخواد نظر تحمیل کنه اگر به ملت ها حق انتخاب میکنم اگر به ملت ها حق انتخاب تو impose his views on others. I said this at the UN. I said that I'm ready to have a debate with the US president. Everybody can hear us. We can talk to each other. Maybe I can convince him in some parts, and maybe he can convince me in some others. I mean, if we say our stuff explicitly, then our views can be. برای اینکه میخواد یه طرف closer to each other but they don't accept the US administration does not accept this because they want to say that whatever we say unilaterally is true say that Mr. Bin Laden was responsible for 9-11 so everybody should accept it and the US administration arrested Bin Laden and killed him without any trial Everybody has to accept it because that's what the U.S. administration says and does. U.S. administration says that the Palestinians are terrorists and everybody has to buy it. And the U.S. administration says that Iranians are bad people. Iranian government is bad and everybody has to accept it. This, you know, the era for this is over. Nobody accepts such a behavior, such an attitude in, in the world. You can have a poll in, in the region. In our region, the, what is the worst uh, administration uh, in the public opinion of uh, uh, the region? And that is the U.S. administration. Uh, is it uh, people are not bad per se? The, why is it? It is because of the attitude and the behaviors of the U.S. administration. I, I, and, and I don't want to, to dwell on this. There's there's some other areas that I would love to speak with you about, if that's okay with you. Can can I get your thoughts on the Arab Spring? Can you hear me okay, Mr. President? Okay. Uh, I know that you watched the Arab Spring unfold. Uh, if you would, do you have any general feelings on how it unfolded before I ask you a very specific question? Are you sure you want to ask me a specific question? No, I'm going to ask you. Okay. Okay. You can. You can ask. Okay. Can you tell me why it appears that Iran has varying opinions, varying positions on the region, essentially from country to country? For example, your position on Syria is to support the people, and if I'm mischaracterizing the Iranian view, please correct me. But that the government can settle the issues. And that you blame the uprising on outside influences. Do I have your position on Syria correct? Tasir Gosiri has been from the outside of Syria. Are you sure that? You see, the U.S. administration has adopted some positions which are not really accurate or not correct. I mean, the position adopted by U.S. administration vis-à-vis Bahrain. There are a couple of principles that we adhere to. We, we say freedom. One of them is freedom. The other one is respect. Another one is justice. And they are the rights of the people. They are the rights of uh, every nation. That is a principle. We have one position and a stance. We have never supported conflict uh, or clashes or any bloodshed. Uh, from the get-go, we have condemned these okay. things. Uh, whether whether, 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 the, whether the governmental officials kill the people or whether the opposition kill the, uh, the governmental uh, forces, we, we, we think it's the wrong thing Mr. to do. We have condemned this all the time. I'm a little confused then. Um, with respect to Yemen, you are four square uh, behind the people protesting. And again, if I'm mischaracterizing your position, please correct me. And your government has condemned uh, the Yemeni government for its crackdown. Why are you condemning the crackdown in Yemen, but I don't hear you condemning the crackdown by the government in Syria, where the facts on the ground indicate the same kind of behavior is going on, where the government is unleashing forces 
upon its people. The, I told you about the principles that uh, we adhere to. We freedom, justice, and respect. They are the rights of everyone, everywhere in the world. They are the rights of the nations. We condemn any clash, any bloodshed. Any, we, I have condemned it myself. I have announced this clearly. And as I said, that outside forces or outsiders should not interfere. Nobody. In Libya, we have had a position about Libya. We have condemned the killing of the opposition. We have also condemned the interference or the intervention of NATO. This is the official position of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Maybe some other people who don't have any responsibility or other media have their own ideas. But the official, that is the official position adopted by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Our recommendation to all nations is to set aside clashes and, and, and differences and with, you know, with conflict, with, with disputes. And nobody can solve anything, uh, killing, you know, on either side. If anybody is killed, uh, then I, the problem will be complicated everywhere in the world. I, I'm confused. I asked you a question about about Syria and and you turned to Bahrain. I asked you a question about uh, Yemen and you turned to Libya. Uh, can you explain that to me? Maybe, maybe you misunderstood the translation. Okay. Okay. I told you the principles and I give you examples. We, condemn, we, have, we have condemned uh, the killing of people. Anybody who kills this is condemned by us. Security forces, when they kill the opposition or when the opposition kill the security forces. We condemn both of them. When, when people uh, uh, protest or have demonstration and they have a clash with each other and kill each other, we condemn it. That is not the right thing to do. Then countries should be run with an understanding, without killing. But based on freedom, justice and respect for all. This is the official policy of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and we have announced it for everyone. Nobody has the right to interfere in the internal affairs of others. Mr. President, let's, let's talk about your country's internal politics for a moment. As you know, the Supreme Leader uh, is quoted as saying, our political system is based on a presidency, and the president is elected by the direct vote of the people which is a good and effective system, but if in the near or distant future, I don't think it will be necessary soon, it seems that a parliamentary system is better for selecting the officials of the executive branch. There will be no problem in changing the present system. If I'm understanding the quote correctly, and if I'm not, I'm sure you'll correct me, is the role of president uh, redundant, non-essential? to the Iranian political system? You're smiling. It, it seems that you are not very happy to see me as a president. <laughs> I, I don't really have a stake, sir. <laughs> we have a constitution which is very transparent. I think the, His Eminence, the Supreme Leader, uh, he, he was asked by a university student or an acad academician, and then the, the, the response was an academic. Uh, response. The Constitution, the status of the President is known, his responsibilities, terms of reference, everybody knows about them. Well, Mr. President, as you look back on the last crisis with, uh, with the Parliament that came to a head in April, I'm wondering, is the new possible system that is being mentioned by the Supreme Leader, is that a solution to some of the tensions that we read about uh, within the branches of government and, and even your offices. Are you the questions that you have to ask about the 
می‌فرمایید بخش بسیار قوی مجری قضایی Iran is a free country. Parliament has responsibilities, and the president also. They have their own authority and power. They might have differences of opinion. Is that a problem? I cannot impose my views on the parliament, and neither can parliament impose its views on me. And the top authority can be, I mean, is in the constitution. The discussions and debates are expressed freely, and the country is run. Well, sir, how do you look back on the aftermath of the 2009 election? You brought up the vote in elections. We saw so much. Of it play out, the aftermath play out on television around the world. It looked like a significant portion of the population of the country challenged the election results, challenged the legitimacy of the vote. Have you addressed in this free and open system? Have you addressed some of the concerns of the people? Are you showing the American people the same way that you talked about? Did you see it? Did you see it? Yes, I'm always among the people of Iran, as much as I can. I mean, the government is a popular government. It comes from the people themselves. The group that had questions about the results of the election, there were actually two types of people. Most of them had questions. When the authorities explained to them, then the problem was solved. I mean, the questions were answered, but there was a minority, and under the pretext of the election, they attacked people. They 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 tried to vandalize the public property, and they set cars on fire. And these are not the right things to do. اما اون ادی که اومدن اعتراض کردن چقدر بود؟ دوز هو پروتستد. How many were they? 100,000 نفر. 100,000 people. 100,000 نفر. 200,000 people. 100,000 نفر. 500,000 people. بیشتر این جمعیت واقعی که می‌دانیم 100,000 نفر. Was 200,000. Let's say 1 million people. Okay. The results of the election showed that my rival actually won more than two million votes in Tehran. Two million people in Tehran would come to the streets. Then it would mean that the results of the election would have changed, and the people who were actually there, they brought their children too. But the children, the children don't have the right to vote. Of course, we respect all of them. They are our honourable citizens, dear citizens. They had questions. It was. It's not my duty to to provide an answer to them. There were authorities which were monitoring the elections, and they prolonged the investigation process, and then they announced that if anybody has any document or any information that shows that the election has been rigged, then that person can offer that document. There was no such document, and. Almost all of them said that there was no irregularity in the process of elections. And all those monitoring authorities certified the results of the elections. Now, many of those people who had questions are, are our friends, are my friends. I love all of them. As the president, uh, I believe myself to be a servant of all of them. In Iran, people are not really into uh, parties. I mean, I mean, we don't ask people who did you vote for. We, we love everyone. Uh, Mr. President, one final question for you. Uh, you cannot stand for election again in the next election cycle, 2013. Uh, I, I'm wondering, uh, as you think on your presidency, um, is in Iran in a better place? Because of your presidency, are the people of Iran in a better place 
uh, because of your presidency, is the country better positioned in the world because of your presidency? Definitely, Iran is in a better place and shape, but not because I have been the president, because of the people of Iran themselves. Iranians are great people. Uh, they, they have made history, they have made culture. They have, you know, our, our youth are now securing top awards and top places in many scientific competitions in the world. Iranian scientists everywhere in the world, they are considered as some of the best in their fields. Iranians in industry, in science, in medicine, in uh, humanities, they, they, they have their own ideas, new ideas in all those fields. For a long period of time, it was the, the UK and the Americans, they, wanted to, 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 they dominated Iran and they prevented Iranians from making progress. Now, a great nation is on the move. Course, if any nation is on the move, then it will make progress. I'm, 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 I'm like a very small drop in the huge ocean of Iran. I'm, I'm, I'm people's servants. It is Iranians, the Iranian nation that is making all those achievements. Uh, despite all the, the problems created for them and challenges. Eight years of war, uh, sanctions, political pressures, uh, US administrations, one after another, they created problems and challenges for us. I, I, Iranian nation has never done anything against the US or the US administration. We have never harmed them. We, we said, just keep your interference to yourself. We have never interfered interfered in the internal affairs of the U.S. We have never and ever done this. We have always had respect for the people of the U.S. We love them. We love Americans. Whenever I paid a visit to the U.S., I, I, I brought messages of friendship to them. But it seems that for the time being, uh, the American officials want to be Mr. stubborn. Uh, thank you very much. You've been generous with your time. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this special edition of Talk to Al Jazeera uh, with the Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. I would like to thank you, your colleagues. And, and I would like to thank everyone, everybody who, who watched this Thank you. Thank for you their time. Time.